focus on love. Love what's in focus. Aim for above because the ceiling's focus. Focus on love. Love what's in focus. Aim for above because the ceiling is bogus. Focus on love. Hey, welcome back to another episode of Famous Rapper Convos. I am David Prorock, your host. I'm here with a very special guest, Doc Trin. Um, Doc Trin, I met through Prophet X, um, my rap coach, Doc Trin and Prophet. Uh, how do you know each other? Uh, I actually was um, one of his worship leaders and uh, I was a potential artist for his label. It just, uh, it didn't, you know, um, bank the right way. So um, mm. it wasn't God's will, but uh, I, I uh, served at his church, uh, was an active member of his church for about a, a year. Good, good, solid. Year. Okay. Yeah. Cool, cool. Um, so, yeah. Dr. N, uh, how do you introduce yourself? You want to say hi to the people? Uh, hey, what's going on, y'all? This is uh, Christian Black, otherwise known as Doctrine. Um, doing my thing, doing God's thing. Uh, you know, I've been doing uh, music since I was in high school and I uh, surrendered my life over to the Lord and do music strictly for the Lord um, since I was about 26. So, yeah, I've been getting it in ever since then for, for the kingdom, man. So, yeah. Cool. Well, thanks for joining me. Um, I'm excited to learn more about your experience and what you've got going on. Um, and so the first question that I always ask artists on this show is, in about three minutes, what I want you to do is think back to like how you first got introduced to music um, and then kind of touch on some of the major events that happened um, throughout your life, which you kind of did right there, but like in a three minute artist story, um, like <laughs> what is your like the story of you as an artist of how you first got into music to where you are today? Well, uh, you know, not to brag, but both my parents are accomplished musicians. Um, my dad's a world-class trombonist. My mother was a superior rated trumpet and a French horn player. So they were two band nerds uh, in love. So music runs in my blood. I was actually a singer before I was a rapper. My mom says that I was uh, singing at perfect pitch uh, at age three and that I already had a sense of rhythm and concepts of rhythms between two and four years old. Um, so I've been doing, uh, you know, music ever since I could barely walk. So um, fast forward, I started getting involved with hip hop in second grade. Um, and if you do you remember that song, Walk This Way, Aerosmith with uh, Run DMC? Okay, so mm -hmm. that, I was in Germany, all right? And uh, Yo! MTV Raps came up on the TV in the, in the, uh, the canteen, uh, which is like the military speak for a cafe. And so I look up there and uh, <clears throat> that video is playing. And ever since then, um, I've been deeply in love with hip hop long before Eminem, you know, long before House of Pain, you know, um, I, I was in love with hip hop before it even became trendy for white boys to love hip hop. So <laughs> Um, pretty deep in it, man. Nice. Love the culture, not just the music, love the culture, the values, you know, the, the uh, principles of hip hop. So fast forward to, uh, uh, I was a group home kid um, in my life three times. Um, so fast forward to junior high age, I was out on the East Coast. And that's when I started writing uh, rap, writing rap lyrics. So, um, and of course, I sucked. But I kept going at it because I loved it, you know, and so you do what you love, you know, and so you get better and better at it if, if that's what, you, you know, your passion is, you know what I mean? So you do what you love, right? So um, the first song that I actually published, believe it or not, was a gospel song called Thy Word, and it was based off scripture in Psalm 119, and I still remember how it goes, and uh, but after that, <clears throat> I was an underground artist in Phoenix, um, a well-known one. Um, from age, uh, I want to say like 22 to like 25 when I uh, left town and had to go help my family. And I ended up in a, a uh, program called Master's Commission, uh, which is like a um, on the job, you know, seminary school um, that is sponsored and was developed by the Assembly of God Church. Mm -hmm. And so from there on, I dedicated all my talents you know, all my abilities uh, to the to the Lord, you know, to God. 
So I, it's before that, it was like kind of a selfish thing. And it was like, how famous can I get? How rich can I get? How much popularity, you know, how much respect can I get doing this? And so now it's like, how much impact on people's lives can I make? You know, how, how many people can I compel to, um, you know, walk, you know, towards the altar and, and say the sinner's prayer and, you know, and meet Jesus that night. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like that's the ultimate, you know, new goals, you know, eternal, trying to store those treasures in heaven, you know, and uh, fast forward again. And uh, I, I kind of gave up on rap for a while, but then God told me, you know, I really shouldn't be doing that. Like I, he gave me that ability for a reason. And so I can sing, I can rap, I do slam poetry. And uh, yeah, that's what's going on, man. And, and tomorrow, um, I have to, to preach at a uh, basketball outreach for my church. So yeah. cool. Ongoing Sounds great. ever since then, nonstop. Yeah. Awesome. So you've been, you've been into hip hop for a while, like oh, run DMC, like walk this way. Yeah. I don't like what year was that? Oh, bro. You're talking about like 85, 86, something like that. 85. Nice. I'm a little, and then you mentioned, little. check this out. You mentioned yo MTV raps. You ever yes, seen sir. one of these before? That looks you ever, like you know who, to me before you even flipped EMT. it over. Yeah. Yeah. You, I used you to know collect them? those cards. Yeah, you're talking nice. to a real hip hop head, my friend. Yeah. Nice, I, knew what nice. that was. I have a whole I have a whole box of the cards. I I, I bought one today. Mm, they were pretty cheap. Maybe one day. I'm saving some. So cool. So doctrine, um, that brings me to my next question, which is um, if you were to think ahead like 12 months from now, in terms of your music career, like what are the kinds of things that you're focusing on for 2021? And um, where do you hope to be like a year from now? Um, and what do you plan on doing to get there? Good question. So in spring, my debut album drops. It's the Indoctrination album. Um, I dropped the EP last year. We can talk about that if you want to talk about that a little bit, because I guess you listened to it. Mm -hmm. I did. Yeah. Okay, so we'll get to that. But yeah, um, I've been dropping singles um, ever since the EP consistently, um, just keeping people, you know, tuned in. And uh, I'm still learning how to promote myself because I'm not really, first of all, it's kind of uncomfortable. And second of all, um, I don't really know how to do it that well. I just create. I'm a creator. So, I, you know, I probably need to like hire somebody to promote me or something. I don't know. Or do, you know, podcasts mm -hmm. like this. So uh, a one-year plan, um, release that album. There's possibly a major event that I'm going to get in on um, that is being planned um, in Houston. Shout out to my man Bright out in uh, Georgia. He has some major connections. That's a possibility. I was going to do um, Derek Miner's Beatsmiths season two this year, but I mm -hmm. ran out of time um, to get it in because um, I wanted to make a real good song. I didn't want to just rush something and you know, put something sloppy in front of him. So, um, but I have the beat. So a song is going to come out with that beat and it's going to be dope. Let's see, the year plan. So a mixtape, a mixtape will be dropping. Um, it's going to be called Summer School. Um, so obviously that's going to drop sometime in the summer or early fall. I'm planning on, I want to start opening for major acts in the, within the year. Um, I do more than rap though. Like I preach... Um, I, I like to find um, kids to mentor and disciple. Like I have this hashtag uh, more than music. Um, I've been using that for a minute. And when you see the music video, you're going to see that I'm wearing a hoodie that says more than music. Because for me, um, you know, you can't worship the music. The music can become an idol. So for me, it's more than music. It's life. You know, it's ministry. It's it's a passion with a purpose, you know, just not passion for a passion's sake. You know what I mean? But yeah, pretty much the the, the twelve month plan. Um, I recently stumbled upon an, an awesome opportunity here in, in um, basically downtown Phoenix. Um, I'm going to be joining a uh, multimedia project um, that has gotten a grant from the city. So that means I'm going to be uh, either doing a podcast interview or um, helping write and direct a podcast. Uh, <clears throat> it's going to be a really good uh, source for music videos for me. Um, this music video that we just released two days ago, um, there's going to be a lot of music videos this year uh, with my music. 
So my visibility is about to go way up. And then once you get that visibility, what are you going to do with it? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's cool. kind of, yeah. I mean, it, there, there's, God has opened some big doors. Um, and now I just need to be worthy enough to step up through them. So I'm prepared cool. mentally and emotionally and spiritually. Cause you know, when you start blowing up and people, you know what I mean? You, then your head can blow up. So you got to stay humble. Got to keep your head down. You know, and just grind, baby. Grind, grind, grind. So totally. Cool. So um you said that um you have an album coming out. Um, and you're also wanting to do a mixtape, live events, um, and music videos and podcasts. Um, yeah. Um, for so for it for the album, um, and I guess kind of also the mixtape, are these songs that you've already created or are you planning on creating the songs this year? Oh, oh yeah. No, there's eight songs deep into this album. Um, it's a concept album. So it's, uh, you know, we're talking about doctrine, we're talking about the gospel, we're talking about the doctrine of the Christian faith. Um, so we're basically defining the whole purpose of why I do what I do and who I am. Um, mm -hmm. So it'll be talking about, you know, Jesus, it'll be talking about the, the gospel the message. It talks about my testimony and tells some of my story, his story, you know, God's purpose. Um, it's, it's a beautiful blend of that. And it's uh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There's three sections. And so each section is a theme. And so there's five songs for Father, five songs for um, Son, and five songs for Holy Spirit. And I'm trying to make a classic. I want every single one of those songs to be rewindable, you know, where people want to keep it on repeat, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm taking my time. I'm not rushing anything out. I got a lot of surprises coming as far as uh, featured artists. Um, the, uh, the, the Christian hip hop community here in, in Arizona is pretty strong. And so I've been having meetings with brothers and sisters and uh, putting together um, collaborative efforts um, that are going to make it on the album. So um, then for the mixtape, do you have a plan for that specifically? Um, for me, I, I released an EP and then a mixtape and then an album because like the mixtape okay. was kind of like practice for the album in a sense. Um, yeah. But do you have a reason for doing the album first and then the mixtape? Well, well, I mean, how do you say this without, I have a lot of recording experience. And if I have time and opportunity and money, I, I can crank out two or three, you know, finished good songs a, a week. Um, so, and praise God, I have a job now, you know, in the behavioral health uh, field um, that I only work like 15, 16 days a month. And then the other half of the month is mine, you know, to do whatever I want with. And guess what I'm doing with it? Serving the Lord, um, recording music and doing ministry. And that's, that's what I'm doing. Nice. I got a meeting with another artist tomorrow, you know, so. You know, yeah, God that's awesome. Doors, you know, but what do you do with those doors? You know, are you responsible? Are you a good steward of the, you know, the, the friendships and blessings he gives you? You know what I mean? Or, or do you take them for granted and start thinking it was you? you know mm -hmm. so, but yeah no i understand your creative process but for me i can just spit out songs and then i can just like weed through them and go okay that's going on the mixtape that's going on the album you know that's mm -hmm. a, i mean i just i see so the mixtape is kind of more of like the leftover songs so you're planning on making like yeah more could... than more than 15 songs then 15 are going on the album mixtape might have some leftover songs um uh, you could say that the mixtape is going to be kind of a sonic journey. Um, it's going to be the kind of thing where I'm just going to find stuff that I, I think is slamming, you know, that's slapping real good as far as beats go. Um, and I'm just going to have fun with it. Just stretch my creative legs, um, get as many artists as I can on it. Um, I'd really prefer a national. Um, I will use a lot of local, but I really would like to grab a lot of national artists and put it on there. Um, mm -hmm. And just have something, to, you know, an outlet for other artists that are up and coming, um, like me. Um, and I know you see the the, the, the white here. Uh, there's a story behind that, too. There's no telling how far in the industry I could have got when I was younger. But I couldn't stay out of trouble, point blank, period. I just couldn't stay out of trouble. So I kept hitting the reset button on my career, on my music career. So uh, that's why I'm a little older, <laughs> still pushing, you know. Yeah. It's never too late. But yeah, the, the short answer is, you know, I, I can create songs um, that I feel comfortable releasing. 
mm-hmm. you know, two to two or three um, a week at that pace. So cool. And yeah. for the mixtape, if you're looking for artists, you can always hit me up. I, I need to check you out, man. You got SoundCloud and. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. I'm everywhere. Um, I have an album out that uh, dropped in November. Uh, okay. I also have a mixtape out and an EP and then like a few singles and that's on streaming yeah. services. And then SoundCloud, I have like a bunch of like random songs that are kind of like rough drafts. Yeah, that's I like SoundCloud because it's like a test zone. You know what I mean? It's like you, yeah. it's like testing, you know, hey, do you guys like this? You know, I put some of my accomplished songs on there too. Like I put my EP on there, but I really, I, I struggle with people um, buying it, you know, buying digital copies. But the mm-hmm. funny thing is, is when I went on tour, um, people bought the physicals. They bought the physical CDs. And you're thinking, dude, it's 2019, you know, 2020, you know, and why are people still buying CDs? And it turns out they buy them for like keepsakes. So of course, yeah. in every single one that I sold, I, you know, I had a, I had to put my autograph in it and put, I always put like a little message, you know, an inspirational, I don't just sign it. Like I want the, to have a personal, you know, connection with each person that w- was kind enough to, you know, support my ministry and buy that EP, you know? So. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. It's definitely like selling like digital music is, is very hard uh, for, several reasons like for one people kind of expect digital music to be free um and the other one is like on a user experience perspective um people if someone like buys your album digitally they it it's hard to even listen to it like the way that the systems are set up um if i were to buy an album like getting it onto my phone so i can actually listen to it it takes like an extra like 10 15 minutes that's true. Like they might even buy the digital album and then just not never even listen to it because it's not convenient to listen to. Whereas with the with the physical, yeah, the physical like people still buy because like you're buying like the experience of like holding something. Yeah. People like touching. Things. Yeah, they, they like touching it and they like meeting the artist that they just heard and you know yeah, it's the personal connection that people are paying for. And so, yeah. oh yeah, merch. I didn't con- include that in the twelve month plan. So merch is definitely coming. So that would be, you know, shirts, hoodies, beanies, uh, rubber wristband. You know, just standard merch, industry mm-hmm. stuff, t-shirts. Is that so, hat your merch? Uh, no, actually, this is a uh, Art of Homage. Um, they're outside of uh, Dallas, Texas. Um, mm-hmm. I've been told this is Eshawn Burgundy's clothing label. Um, I'm not, sh- you know, I, I got to verify that, but, um, I, all I know is I saw this stuff on Instagram and I thought, this is dope. I got to get it. And so I started getting it. And I'm a regular, uh, customer, big fan of, of AOH clothing. Hmm. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so what, what's that Instagram account? Um, <laughs> hold on. Yeah. It's, it's art of homage. Art of ho- oh, homage. Like yeah. homage, homage. Yeah, people say homage or homage. Homage. Um, it depends yeah. on who you homage. who you speaking to. Okay. Um, I heard somebody say homage, and I was like, "Nah, I think it's something else." And uh, yeah, yeah, I think homage, homage is how, like, you have to pay homage. Yeah, I'm searching yeah. for it. So it's art of homage. Okay. Yeah, art of of homage. Okay, mm-hmm. that's cool. And then you, uh, so like you just found that account, and then they, uh, they sell merch directly on their Instagram accounts, and then you were able to purchase it. Yeah, I found it on Instagram, and then I saw they were they were uh, advertising on Facebook, and um, mm-hmm. but yeah, uh, it's me. Are you gonna sell your merch like that? Uh, yeah, eventually. Um, but I, then I'll be <laughs> like competition. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, but he's got uh, Art of Homage has uh, 186,000 followers. They're they're the real deal, you know. That's Instagram. solid. Nice. And uh, they make beautiful uh, work, man. Good stuff. So. Cool. Um, okay, yeah. so my next question for you: uh, We talked a little bit. You said that you are kind of involved in a rapper community, and you also work with producer, and you're connected with a, a multimedia um, program. Um, and yeah, that's new. That actually happened yesterday. <laughs> that's sweet. My question for you is, 
thinking of like what your goals are for the next 12 months, um, like who have you not yet met that would be a great help for you? Like if somebody were to find this video and they their expertise was in blank, um, like who would be like, do you think would be like the magic person that can help you reach your goals 10 oh, times no, faster? No question. Um, I, I need a uh, graphic design master and I need uh, to help me get like really good marketable images to yeah. identify my brand. And then I also need uh, a videography team uh, for music videos, which it looks like that's coming together. But, um, and I'll tell you one more cool thing that has to do with that. And I, I also really need a, uh, a promotions um, expert or firm. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, I don't know how to do any of that stuff. I don't understand algorithms. You know, I don't understand, you know, the free stuff that you can use. Like I just found out, you know, you can automate your Facebook music page and people ask certain questions, it'll give an answer. And it always, it's like a fan collector. And so like, I need to learn how to use fan collecting tools, mm -hmm. um, things like that. But yeah, and the cool thing is this multimedia um, studio that just opened its doors to me, it's on the strength of that basketball outreach. Just being mm -hmm. faithful, man, just showing up. Like, I, I don't know who shows up to our church, you know, and uh, it turned out, you know, it was, uh, the, one of the guys running the outreach is connected with a multimedia. I mean, that's God, bro. All I was awesome. able to do was preach to some guys who like to hoop it up. You know, and you know, a lot of the parks around the country are closed. So, you know, we have a, a little setup on the low for them to play and they do come and, you know, just preaching to them. And I guess it touched the heart of some of the guys running the, the event. And then they said, Hey, you know, we got an opportunity for you. So mm -hmm. just, being faithful, man, being obedient to God, you know, totally. Yeah. It's a networking. trip how it's worked out, man. It's a trip. It blows my mind. Well, go ahead, think go about ahead. this speaking of blowing your mind. Well, so like, that's one way that you can meet people. Um, another way is when you have like videos like this, um, you can send this to people and it can kind of serve the same purpose of helping people, helping you connect with people that, can provide you with opportunities without okay. you actually having to do it in person every time. So um, it's kind of like, uh, you know, you we do this interview once and then people can get to know you uh, without you like doing it over and over again. Yeah, See yeah, what I'm yeah. Saying? yeah. Great. So what happens, well, I'll ask at the end. <laughs> okay, no, go ahead, okay. yeah, you got a question? Okay. And then what happens? Nah, go oh. ahead. Um, nice, yeah, so my next question for you, um, Something that every rapper needs, needs to know is what is the one song that people should listen to first? Like somebody who's never heard of you, what song do you think they should listen to um, as like their first song to get an introduction to uh, doctrine? That I've created? Oh, man. You're, See, you're, sometimes... You're... Sometimes this is the music video, you know, the music video is like, this is my best song. So I'm going to make the best music video. And then this is the one thing that everybody is going to see to get an introduction to who I am as an artist. Um, do you do you like have a song like that? Yeah, honestly, it's an old song. <laughs> um, we're talking like more than 40 songs ago, you know, recording. Yeah. So um, and it's my mama's favorite song so far. Nice. Um, it was called Champion. Champion. Yeah, and the, the hook goes, even though this world may hold me down, I'm going to get back up because I know the one who lifts me up. Even And even though I'm fighting for my life, I know I'm not alone. It's by his blood that I'm a champion. And so, and the beat was made by this dude named Juice 2020 out in Jacksonville, Florida, because uh, mm -hmm. I was down there for a summer. So I took that beat and I wrote the song called Champion, and they used the uh, training montage music uh, from Rocky. So, of course, I'm not going to go very far commercially with that song, but that song probably inter it introduces people to, you know, pretty much the, the essence of, you know, who Doctrine is. And um, So how can I find that song? <laughs> There's only one place you can find it, bro. It's on Reverb Nation. Um, it's not on the Reverb Nation I sent you. It's on a different uh, Reverb Nation? Is it MC Doctrine? Is that yeah. You? Did you find it? Uh, yeah, Champion original version. Oh my goodness. You already found it? Yeah, I found it. 
Um, but that? I am an experienced searcher. Oh, I guess I got enough of a digital footprint, huh? Maybe. <laughs> I don't well, even what I know, did... bro. That, that's what I'm saying. I, I don't even know. The, like, I just created. The first thing I did. The first thing I did is I went to YouTube and I searched Doctrine Champion, and then uh, I didn't find anything. So then I just searched Google Doctrine Champion, and then I saw Reverb Nation was a result. And then I went to that, and then it's like your fifth song is called Champion Original Version. And so I yeah, can share it, this song, put it put it in the description of this video so people can find it. Well, I mean, no, not that one. Because <laughs> it's old, bro. It's like, it's not even... I don't know, but you see how I was in Madison, Wisconsin. So uh -huh. you see the, the picture of me praying. Yeah, that's where you, that's the only place you can find it. I just sent that to you while you were telling me you found it already. Okay, yeah. wait, but that's not the, but that's not the song that you think people should listen to first of yours? Uh, man. Well, I mean, if they listen to that, they're going to be like, dude, this dude's like old school, you know, and like they need to understand that that song is old, like old, mm -hmm. old, old. I yeah. think I recorded that song. I, I I recorded it in like 2006. So that song is 15 years old, bro. Wow. Wow. Didn't you realize that? That song is 15 years old, dude. That's just timeless. Yeah. It right. doesn't matter when it was created. So the next question and you can I see, have for you. It, yeah. Yeah. And if you go into that profile, actually, you can see a lot of the famous people that I've met over the years. Like I've met Casting Crowns. I've met Tadashi. Um, yeah. It's a trip, bro. Nice. Yeah. Um, so. But you but you have since made a, a new Reverb Nation. Why uh, Reverb yeah. Nation? Let me ask you that. Like why Reverb Nation and why Reverb Nation twice? Well, at the time, Reverb Nation was popping. You know, that was where a lot of undiscovered artists were going. And to be honest with you, it was free. So it was at the right price. Their basic service is free. So you're going to get discoverability. You're going to get exposure. Um, but if you want like mass exposure, mass discoverability, you have to pay for the service. Hmm. So they have packages like $15, $20 a month. And they do, you know, they just blast your stuff all over the internet. But the game has changed. Um, there's a lot of free stuff now. Um, I do subscribe to DistroKid. Um, that's how I distribute my, my music until I get a distribution deal. Nice, me too. Um, but yeah, DistroKid, like it's all over the internet. It's everywhere. And it's funny you said Google search. Okay, so I got a frustrating thing going on. Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to wait until Google recognizes me as um, an entity you know, on, uh, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Where yeah. You, you want your, your artist profile when you Google it. Yeah. Where you confirm that it's you. Maybe mm. I've got one now. I'm not sure, but you have um, to confirm it's you. And then you can send people to your uh, Google search link and then they can find like your discography, you know, your bio, all that, all your social media. Yeah. I searched doctrine and and you don't have one. If I search MC doctrine, you still don't have one. Um, yeah. but it's like not that hard to get one actually. Like all you have to do essentially is create enough accounts on different platforms. So and you need to use the exact same name. So you need like an Instagram account um, that has the same name and a YouTube channel and a Spotify and um and so you can do some of that um using DistroKid. Um, but then you also need to like claim those profiles. Um, and then, uh, and then basically like once you have enough things on Google that are all the same person, like the same name from different places, then Google is like, okay, so this person is, is this, and then they create that for you automatically. So that's what I'm missing because I haven't claimed my iHeart. I haven't claimed my Pandora. I haven't claimed my Shazam or, you know, well, Sound those like, I, I don't think you need to, but like, uh, Apple music spotify and I did claim, youtube i claim those two well and i have a i have a youtube channel there just was nothing interesting on it <laughs> now right. there's finally a good you know a well done music video so yeah cool yeah so it, it'll probably come eventually you just got to yeah. keep using the the same brand the same name in enough different places um so that they recognize it so that's how you do it okay yeah yeah all right, nice. My next question for you. I want to 
learn, get into the process that you take for creating a song. So if we were to look at a specific song, um, maybe a, a song off your EP like Batter featuring Victoria. Yeah. Um, like what is the what's the process that you took to actually create that song from start to finish? This is going to trip you out how simple this is. I went beat shopping on YouTube, plain, you know, period. I uh, I found a beat I liked. Um, shout out to Accent. Um, that's who made it, Accent Beats. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I just loved it. I wrote to it. I realized I had something and I bought the beat. And then we went in to uh, Base Gang University um, Studios um, here in Phoenix and laid it down, bro. And uh, the whole thing I wrote, including the melodies um, that she sings, but I know it was the Holy Spirit, you know, there's no question it was God's creative energy in me. Um, but it came out, you know, I think it came out pretty good. It is a popular song. People do ask me to do it uh, when I, you know, make an appearance. So, but yeah, the process was simple. I, I went beat shopping, found a beat, started writing to it, um, liked what it was becoming. It was developing into a really solid song and recorded it. But it doesn't always go that way. Um, in fact, a lot of the songs on my album coming out are going to be produced from scratch. And that's not my forte. Um, so there's going to probably be some hits and misses um, as far as what people want to keep listening to. Um, but, you know, we wanted to grow uh, and, you know, advance, evolve as art, as an artist, you know, challenge myself. Yeah. So totally. I'm sure a few of them are going to pop, but some of them might be duds. So. Mm hmm yeah, making a beat from scratch is, is more risky. Like when you're choosing a beat, you have three billion beats and then you can find the best one. When you're making one from scratch, like you're just making it. And then like, you know, then you're then that's the one that you made. But it does have its benefits because when you make it from scratch, then you um, then you own the a whole copyright of it. Um, and you inherently have like exclusive rights to it or like the producer does at least. But if you're making it with the producer, then technically it can be um, production for hire. And so if you are paying the producer to make the beat from scratch, then you um, automatically own uh, the exclusive rights to it. So that's one pro of doing it that way. Um, yeah. But then you do miss out on like choosing the dopest beats that exist in the world. What, what you sipping on? Believe it or not, eggnog, bro. One more week, you know? <laughs> hey, is that, uh, like Christmas time, New Year's, like the eggnog's my my lick, bro. Yeah, real talk. Like I don't know why, but I just I used to hate it when I was a kid too, and I just developed a taste for it, and I, I've been guzzling it ever since. So nice. I don't think I've ever had eggnog straight. Uh, apparently, it be it was a thing this year to do eggnog mixed with coffee. Uh huh. You ever hear of this before? Have you tried that? Nah, it doesn't okay. sound that great. Yeah, I had a little bit of that, but I've, I don't think I've ever had straight eggnog before. You think I should give it a try? I mean, I like it. It's not for everybody. You know, it's it's an acquired taste, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I can't really tell you, yeah, do it because you might not like it. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. Next question I have for you. What experience do you have with freestyle rapping do you know how to freestyle um and does it and i mean if not then no but if it does then like how how do you use it for your songwriting yeah i, I mean i i've been freestyling since junior high um picked it up put it down what i mean is i, I would concentrate on practicing and, and staying sharp because it's like a muscle if you don't use it you lose it it gets mm -hmm. flabby and you got to build it back up again. And uh, actually, it's funny you say that because I was freestyling in my car a couple of days ago and I was getting the rust off, you know. Um, there's this, have you ever heard of that app, Battle App? Um, yes. It's like, <laughs> it's not a very friendly uh, environment for Christian artists, but uh, it is a place to freestyle. And uh, actually, I kind of put that down because people were getting like uh, catching feelings and getting personal. And I just kind of said, mm. um, you know, I'm not just here, like, I'm an artist, you know what I mean? So I was like, people were trying, of course, they're trying to get at you. But uh, 
freestyling yes so battle app how how would you describe how do, how would you describe how battle app works in like one or two sentences battle app what makes it special uh can you rap or not do you know how to pick the right beat to fit your your uh, cadence and delivery is your delivery mm -hmm. good are you boring to listen to um and can you get in somebody can you can you can you smash them so and well, then so how does it work uh so you pick a you pick a song um they have a preloaded like hundreds of beats and you pick a beat and you get like 30 seconds to rock it and then uh once you're done if somebody sees it they think they can do better than you then they jump on that beat and they battle you mm. so it's you do a freestyle and there's kind of like a feed of beats yeah there's like a a, a feed of like streams. And then it's you stream. one yeah, it's it's streamed. Okay, so, and then you and then you pick people to challenge them. Like when you see a freestyle, you're like, I want to battle this person, and then you use the same beat, and then battle them. Is there video involved? Yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. It's a nice little interface uh, for an app. Um, you can see the person, you can hear the person. Um, the way they have it formatted, though, people have to buy like those AirPods, or the Apple, you know, the ones with the that have the thin cord. Um, yeah. And they'll be like, they'll hold their little mic right here. And so it looks kind of goofy because they'll be like, doo -doo 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 -doo, while they're holding the mic to their mouth. Yeah. So Like Dr. Evil. Yeah. It's just kind of, it looks like kind of hokey. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, yeah. Cool. Well, if you are interested on Thursday nights uh, at 8 p.m. your time, I do freestyle ciphers in my Discord channel. Have you ever freestyled on Discord before? No. Oh, it's really fun. You get in a room, you can do, you even do video chat room, um, and then you have a bot that can play a beat, and then you basically can just freestyle, and then everybody hears your voice and the beat at the same time. And so you, uh, we do like a cipher rotation um, within Discord. And then if you are set up to your computer, you can have a microphone and headphones. And then it basically sounds like everybody is like actually in this studio or like in real life, like ciphering. Um, it's oh, wow. Really fun. You have to throw me a, a, a link, bro. Yeah, you I'll send you the link. Email. You got my email, right? Um, yeah, I got it. Well, I also have you on Facebook. Okay. Yeah, throw me a link, man. Cool. I'm down. Nice, nice. Um, Nice. Let's see. Uh, do you have any questions for me? Um, well, how long have you been uh, repping hip hop? Oh, good question. Um, I started in high school when I was a freshman, uh, which was 11 years ago. Um, okay. And then I rapped pretty consistently throughout high school. Um, I had like a different rap partner every year, basically. Um, my personality type, like in everything I do, like I always like to have a partner. Um, I don't really like doing stuff on myself. Um, and so uh, when I was rapping, I would always have a partner. We would like work on projects together, do like feature tracks and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, in college, I didn't rap very much. I did like a little bit, some solo projects. Uh, and I made a lot of like loops, beat loops using machine, just kind of like trying that out, like learning the basics of what beat making is like. Uh, and yeah. then after college, um, which was in, uh, in 2018, um, I started making my own music again after um, I was a software engineer at Facebook and I worked on the music and rights team. Um, and so the team. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. The, Continue. The team, I got another question, right? That's a follow up, but go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I'm almost done. Um, so the, the team, like what we worked on was uh, ingesting all the music from major record labels and putting it in Instagram music. And so as part of being on that team, um, I did like a lot of user research on independent artists. Um, and it got me really like back in it. And then I was like, I want to do this again. Um, so I dropped an EP in 2018. And then in 2019, um, I dropped a few singles. I think that's it. Uh, but then in 2020, I dropped uh, uh, like my hit single, like that one song, first song that I would send to anybody to listen to. It's called Big Hat. Um, and that's a love song that I made for my girlfriend for Valentine's Day. And then in April, I dropped a mixtape called Better Than Before. And then in November, I dropped my album called Now and Later. And that's my whole history. Now and Later, now and later like the candy? <laughs> yeah, like the candy, but it's not, it has nothing to do with the candy. Um, what was it like working for Facebook for Zuckerberg, dude? For Zuckerberg? 
it was good. <laughs> like it was a great place to work. Um, it, I mean, it's not, it wasn't easy, but it was nice. Like there's a lot of perks. Um, and then the expectations are really high. Um, and you really need to have a lot of skills like you need to both be able to be a really good engineer and be really good at communicating and like you know you have to have like both skills and technology skills um mm -hmm. and so yeah it's so, a pretty no. like fast-paced environment um there's a a lot of constant change like just like constant chaos um everything is always changing priorities are changing and so you have to try to do everything like really fast otherwise like the the thing you're working on like might not exist if you can't um finish it fast enough and um yeah so it was like really really high paced fast paced environment um and i met a lot of cool people one of my favorite parts was um they have the like internal systems where people post about like the research projects that they do like um the different products do user research where they like ask people different stuff about how they use facebook and stuff like that and then that gets um shared on on online and then i loved like reading that stuff like that's um where i felt like like the most alive and like that was like my most favorite part was like learning about all the user research because they have some of the best researchers in the world there it's fascinating yeah you get to find out what people's likes and dislikes are and their political leanings and their interests, you know, as far as, you know, merchandise and goods and services go. Sounds interesting. Yeah. And additionally, like, there's a lot of small businesses that use Facebook. So it's kind of finding out like how they how they use Facebook, like, how do people successfully use Facebook, uh, like trying to like build the products uh, that can help people build communities. Yeah. Well, my video was lagging. Uh, yeah, it is. I, I can still see you and I can hear you, but it's like choppy. But hey, don't worry about that. What anyway, um, I wanted, here's the follow-up question. Um, what project that you played a part in and uh, help engineer are you most proud of at Facebook? That's a good question. Um, like on a personal level um, or like just that like I was involved with, you know what I'm saying? You're on a, on a professional level. Like, like your highest achievement that you're the most proud of at Facebook? Uh, um, so the, the biggest project that I worked on was um, rebuilding the uh, event creator tools for oh. the Facebook Lite app. Um, Facebook, Facebook Lite, uh, you probably haven't heard of it. Um, it's like normal Facebook, but uh, instead of being an app, it's basically like a shell of an app. And then the server just sends screens um, and so the app is really, really small. And then this is the Facebook Lite is what uh, people use in places that have like uh, lower quality phones um, and like worse internet. Uh, oh. And so the uh, all the features, the app is like a totally different app. Um, and so everything has to be built separately for it. And so I built the uh, event creation tools like the, or, or like I rebuilt them. Um, like I migrated to a, a, the modern way of doing it. Um, event creation and deletion and editing and like managing guests and um, that kind of stuff you guys made that dummy proof <laughs> yeah you made it goal. idiot proof yeah it's it's very useful yeah. i've used it yeah well yeah, it's, done it's really cool thanks the the infrastructure that's set up for testing stuff is amazing um like you can you do you can do like small changes and test them and then see like uh, if you did this, then like people created 10% more events. But if you do on this version, uh, people created 20% fewer events. Um, and so obviously you would go with the 10% more and then you yeah. can um, test like different stuff to make things as easy as possible. Okay, that's yeah. cool. Well, I learned something about you. Um, where are you based out of? I am in Oakland, California. Oh, I got a few friends from Have Oakland. Have you ever been? I've never been to Oakland, but I got some people from Oakland out here friends with. Nice. So um, it's that's a nice cool. place. Okay. Cool. All right. I got more cool. questions for you. Uh, we have oh. just a couple more questions that we can close it out. Uh, Go. So one of the things that I love to do more than anything else is listen to full albums. And so oh. what I what I try to do is listen to every great album in existence from any genre and any decade. And so my question for you is like, what are two 
really fantastic albums that you know you would go back to and listen to multiple times because the experience of listening to it all the way through is so great oh my goodness bro man what comes right off the top of the dome i gotta say uh nas is uh stillmatic mm -hmm. stillmatic or illmatic no stillmatic illmatic is a classic but i just i don't know stillmatic just hit me even harder and then um believe it or not uh kirk franklin's god's property okay kirk franklin featuring god's property um, god's property yeah let me i'll find it i forgot no, i got it. it i got it did you find it? God's property from Kirk Franklin's New Nation. Yeah, New Nation. Cool. Stillmatic, I've heard. That second one, I love it. That's something that I would never listen to without asking you. So I'm going to check that out. I appreciate that. I think you'll be inspired, bro. I think it'll wake something up in you. Um, that album got me through some tough times, bro. I was homeless when I was rocking that. Wow. Uh, it got me through. And we're talking like back when people had tapes. So, you know, I was listening to that Walkman when I was 18, 19 years old. I listened to that little New Nation project. It got me through some hard times, man. Shout out to Kirk Franklin. You know, he's if he if he ever sees this or somebody who knows him sees this, I'm going to tell you, man, Kirk, you got me through some really hard times, bro. And uh, you're part of my testimony. I appreciate you. That's beautiful. Thanks for sharing that. I'm excited. I'm excited to listen to that. That sounds awesome. Yeah, highly recommend um, it. Personally, I'm not going through that hard of a time right now, but I can pretend like I am. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it'll, it, whether you are or not, bro, this music's so powerful. It gets anointed. It's uplifting. And uh, if you've never experienced contemporary Black gospel music, I don't know if you've ever kind of tipped your toe in that. Oh, no, dude, not really. Except go. for Kanye West. Well, he dips. Yeah, he does put a little gospel in him, in his work. That's true. Um, you, of course, you listen to his Christian album, right? Jesus is King. Yeah, Jesus is King, right? Yeah. I did listen to it. Yeah, that was good. Not memorable. Like, I don't remember any of it, really. Really? The, what, the, the thing that stands out to me the most is, and I don't think it was even on the album, um, but on like a YouTube video I watched called Yandi. And then he has a song where it starts with like the beeping of a car, like the car door is open. Yeah. Is that on Jesus is King? Uh, yeah, it's that's actually his dad getting out of a car. Um, the music oh. video is a trip, bro. It's that one that ends with him screaming. Ah! Like it does that at the end. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, oh, the the YouTube video for it? Open, though, was closed on Sunday. King, from the Jesus King album, closed on Sunday. There's a you couple. know the name of the one uh, that I was just talking about? Uh, it's like, dun, 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 dun. hold on. Is it called Use This Gospel? Yeah, Use This Gospel is a really good one, too. If you um, use this gospel, uh, 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 I don't know all the words, but yeah, Jesus is nice. King. Well, but you said um, there's, okay, I wanted, I'm going to find that music video you're talking about for that song. What I was talking about was, I think it's uh, Follow God. I think I might have watched that, but I'm, I'll give it another another chance. But the one that everybody's bumping the most, like um, that one, uh, Closed on Sunday, um, I really enjoy Water and Use This mm -hmm. Gospel. I, I enjoy those. The whole album's, you know, slamming, of course, but I mean, the ones that I like really hit hard on was like about four of them. Nice. And, you know, just so you know, like from the Christian hip hop point of view, like some brothers are like excited that G that uh, Kanye announced that he had committed his life to Jesus. And others were kind of like, well, let's kind of watch this brother. You know, it's kind of, I don't yeah. know. It's, our community is kind of different. Cool. Doctrine. The last thing I'll say is I'll just give you the rest of this time here, a couple minutes, if you want to, for whatever you want to say, um, People have been watching this for almost an hour at this point. And so how do you want to leave them off? Uh, your boy's a late bloomer, but don't um, pass up a chance to step, you know, stand around and, uh, and sniff my flowers. They, they grew out of the concrete like many other artists. Uh, I have a testimony um, that, you know, could be a movie one day, who knows? Um, been through a lot of things, um, abuse, neglect, the streets, you know, uh, drugs, selling, 
just, you know, the standard stuff that people, you know, want to hear about. Um, but what I want to tell you about is like how God's hand stayed on me, um, even through my foolishness, even through very dangerous situations. And I do it through my music and I do it through slam poetry. And um, I just want to share it with you. You know, we don't get a lot of time on this earth. And so when you find out what you're supposed to do uh, with your life, you know, you want to do it. You want to do it to the fullest. And uh, I hope that the passion that I have uh, for what I do um, touches you and, and speaks to your hearts. And uh, if you, this is, let me get, this is really on my mind, bro. So the last four years, you think about the last four years in the mainstream American church. And I want to tell y'all, if you've been church hurt, if you're confused, if you're discouraged, I want you to know that there's real ones out here. There are real Christians, there are soldiers, there's people who know, you know, when, when something's wrong, it's wrong. And when something's not true, it's a lie. And we don't pull punches and we love folks and we love you. We love God. We love people, period. We don't judge you, you know, push you away because you're not, you know, the you're the other and you're not us. We embrace you even more. You know, we, we try to be like Jesus, man, that unconditional, all encompassing, you know, all inclusive love. And so it comes through in, in my music. It comes through um, in, in interviews like this. Um, I'm going to be having another one um, with another podcast, I think, next week. Um, and what we're going to be talking about eventually, um, if I do end up getting involved in this podcast, is uh, where is authentic Christianity? It's and discussing it as far as in the in the United States, you know. Mm. So, but I hope that what I do gives you renews your hope, gives you spiritual strength, gives you a reason to come back to Jesus and, and just sit at His feet and learn His ways and you know and await His return and you know be saved in, on the final day. There's just so much going on in this world and dark. The world is getting darker and darker and more dangerous. And we need the hand of God over us more than ever. So, you know, I just want to say that, that cool. that's the whole purpose behind what I do. So it's beautiful. Well, doctrine, it was a pleasure talking with you today. Um, and one last thing, I, two questions is like, what's the best place for people to follow along on your journey? And what's the best way for people to get in contact with you? Well, I could stay on my Facebook music page. Um, it's, it's, uh, facebook.com slash, uh, doctrine music. So D O K T R I N music. I I'm always looking for likes, uh, other artists. If you like my page and you let me know, I will like yours too. Um, I'm very big about supporting other artists. Um, you know, Philippians two says to consider others more important than yourself. Um, to not always look out for your own selfish interests. There's a lot of that going on, both in, of course, the mainstream rap world and in the Christian rap world, which is kind of sad, to be honest with you. But um, yeah, so I practice what I preach. I live what I know. I'm not a perfect man by any stretch of the imagination. But yeah, the Facebook music page, Instagram, I am Doctrine. You can shoot me a DM. You're a promoter, you're a graphic designer, you're, you know, um, anything you think you can help. Uh, advance uh, my ministry and in, into more uh, capabilities and you know more relevance and more exposure um, that'd be appreciated and you'll be surprised what I'm going to do with it uh, I got a list of uh, special causes that are really near and dear to my heart um, I'm just waiting you know to be able to, to support and fund and you can't do that without making any money man so I'm, cool. I'm a, I can't give people my personal Facebook because I've maxed out at 5,000 so um, oh, yeah, wow. good, music good thing I got in there. <laughs> yeah. David, you're special, bro. Yeah. <laughs> David means beloved by God. So that's true. You're and you're also, you're in the, you joined the famous rapper community Facebook group. I think I saw you. Comment yeah. There. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to oh. know how you want me to engage that. Yeah. Uh, I forgot the question I always ask, which is based on what you know, what is the secret to becoming a famous rapper? I answered it in your post, bro. Well, so you, you have an answer prepared. What is it? Uh, being in the right place at the right time, performing the right song in front of the right people uh, for the right reasons. 
I can, oh yeah, you asked about freestyling. So one time I ended up freestyling at the Marquee Theater, which is a well-known venue in Tempe, Arizona. And I was pushed up there on stage by a homegirl of mine. And I, and I uh, rocked the house with Kara's one um, on, the, on the stage. And I, bro, like Chris, are you kidding me? KRS one, like yo, you know what I'm saying. So I got bona fides for freestyling, but I wanted to say, uh, and actually that didn't go the way I wanted it to. I got too excited and I got in the flesh. I'm gonna tell on myself <laughs> because if you go find that video, and you will see it if you can find it. Uh, yeah. Um, but anyway, so I kind of made a mistake that night in front of uh, at least over two thousand people. Um, but yeah. Wait, what was the mistake? Cussing. <laughs> oh, okay. Wait, you, you didn't say that. You didn't yeah. say the N word, right? Right. Oh no, 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 no. Okay. No, okay. Good, good. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> so, but yeah. Um, to answer your question, like I said, um, when you humble yourself and you put other artists and other production companies, record labels, interests ahead of your own, you'd be surprised how many people you get to sit in front of. You know what I'm saying? Like I got mm -hmm. to sit in front of the, the urban radio program director for the West Coast, um, Shock G. Um, we picked up Corrupt from the airport one time. I was the concierge for MC Breed, um, his, uh, you know, gopher fetch it guy uh, when I was on the lower rung of an um, entertainment group here in Phoenix. You'd be mm -hmm. surprised, bro. You just keep humble. You know, you, you say, hey, what can I do to help you? Yeah, I want to be down. Yeah, I want to be in the scene. Yeah, I want to be in the mix. But what can I do to help you? That's how you become successful. That's how I, that's how I feel. You just get around the right people and you have the right attitude yes. and you have an attitude of, of gratitude and of servanthood and watch amazing things happen. Perfect. Thank you so much, Doctrine. Um, I'll let you get to bed. And I hope you have a great rest of your week, a great 2021. And I'm excited to see where you take this whole music thing. Yeah, man. All right. Well, this means I love you. Thank you, you so much. So, all right, man. Yeah, it all means right. I love Thanks. you. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> all right. Love what's in focus, aim for above, cause the ceiling is bogus. Focus on love, love what's in focus, aim for above, because the ceiling's bogus. Focus on love, love what's in focus, aim for above, cause the ceiling is bogus. I wanna lay down a never ending road, we never go to